Hi guys, this is Best Boomer uh, back at you from um, the Prescott uh, National Forest. I'm still up here, still enjoying the uh, natural beauty and the cooler temperatures. It's in the 80s here and I know it was reaching like 116 <laughs> back at home. So uh, it's kind of a nice break. Um, so I got a little bit of uh, feedback from my last video um and it was on covid and that's what i'm going to talk about again today um again this is best boomer uh i'd sure um like it if you considered uh going ahead and subscribing or at least like it and share it with others um this is all just my opinion and i just like the outlet and um so um, i try to back up uh you know, my thoughts with uh, valid research, I don't base it um, just on my feelings. Um, don't you wish this COVID thing would just go away? Uh, it's really causing um, a lot of havoc in our society. Uh, I'm basically a very optimistic person. And um, so, you know, I tend to look at on the bright side and that's kind of um, what I'm doing here. Candace Owen, I don't know if anybody follows her. Um, if you're a little more on the conservative side, you might follow her. Uh, she posted a daily reminder <laughs> that um, said uh, that we basically shut down America over a virus with 99.96% survival rate. And you know what? Um, she's right. It's pretty high. Uh, rate of survival um, and if the odds are like that I'd gamble if I went in to a casino with that kind of odds um, I definitely undergo surgery with that kind of odds I'd probably even uh, parachute with that kind of odds okay so if you want to call me a risk taker go ahead uh, but um, again uh, for people under 70 the risk of dying is 0.04 percent uh, of course you know if you're over 70 uh, if you're elderly with any comorbidities then um, you know you're going to want to take extra precautions and stay inside um, you know I uh, given those circumstances um, you know I wouldn't want to take the chances um, so just, uh, this is kind of interesting information. I just thought, you know, when we're talking about people take this so differently, um, you know, whether the seriousness of it, um, they take it so differently. Uh, Orange County, California, I just learned they're making plans to open up their school system, uh, in the fall. No masks and no social distancing. And they're pretty confident their kids are going to be okay. Uh, they cited that um, that 166 children had died of the flu in California, this Orange County, and uh, none under the age of 18 have died of COVID. Okay, so and we're certainly not closing down our schools due to the flu, are we? Um, so this just something to think about. Uh, just have a big old truck going by with lumber. They're doing some building up here. Um, it, it amazes me that they're building in a national forest. Uh, the cabins up here are absolutely gorgeous. Some are full time uh, and some just come up for the summer and some like us just come for a month. Um, but I, you know, I digress and get back to the, my focus here. Um, Looks like in California, or excuse me, in Florida, a couple hospitals actually really messed up their stats on uh, testing for COVID. Um, one of them had actually that 76% of the population tested positive. Well, lo and behold, when they started looking at it and correcting their mistakes, it came down to 6%. Now, at the very least, that does kind of rock one's uh, comfort level, level or confidence in those numbers coming out here. 
So you can probably, you know, take whatever number you like and use it for however um, you like. But I say again, you know, the interesting thing is they're thinking that probably 40%, <coughs> excuse me, 40% of the population actually are already infected. They just don't know it. And you know, if you have to be tested to know you have something, I'm not going to worry about it that much because um, you're probably feeling pretty good. Now, if you have symptoms, of course, you want to be tested. And, and you know, they don't admit you into the hospital though until, um, you know, you're feeling much worse, sometimes almost um, until it's too late. So, and the one thing that is really important in this whole thing is that we want to make sure our hospitals have capacity for those who do get sick and need that care. And that's, that's kind of one of the tipping points that, you know, I would say um, drastic measures would have to be taken until there's that capacity. Um, because I would hate to think that somebody who needed care um, couldn't get it. It was pointed out to me by one of my readers that, you know, they're having to use refrigerator trucks for those who have died. And yeah, I know that, and it's happened in a couple places. And um, But think about it. If your hospital is set up for the normal day-to-day, -day, and nobody, I don't care who they are, are ever prepared for a pandemic, okay? They aren't. They're not going to have the capacity. They have to really work to upgrade and have room. So even though it's a very sobering thought that somebody would have to be put in a, you know, refrigerator semi or buried elsewhere. That's, you know, it is what it is. I hate that saying, but, but it is true. So I'm not heartless. I'm realistic. Okay. Um, so I ask you out there, I pose this question. So how long do you want the country shut down? How long do you want the kids out of school? Uh, you know, until there's a new president? Now that might be one that enters in, being as the Trump derangement syndrome is alive and well out there. Um, the other one is if hospitals are over capacity, that one um, I do agree with. You want to wait till there's a vaccine? Well, unfortunately, this is kind of an interesting fact that uh, this virus is mutating and it mutates about like the common cold virus, you know, over and over again. So you can never really catch up with it. And um, so having a vaccine that's going to work for that mutated virus, it could be unlikely. Now I'm hoping, and like I say, I'm an optimistic person. I have total confidence in our scientists um, that uh, if, you know, the will is there, and under God's grace, they're going to come up with something that's going to mitigate these circumstances um, enough so that people aren't cowering in the corner out of fear. Um, I hope that happens. Um, here's a, another little interesting fact that I don't think everybody really realizes or thought about it. You know, the numbers keep going up and up and up and people are going, oh my gosh, look at, we got 3,000 new cases in a day. Well, you know what? If the testing's going up, the numbers are going to go up, okay? That's a big duh. Um, so, people see their lives through different prisms. Um, some people only see the problems, and that's the way they live. Uh, and I like to think that I see problems as challenges, and that basically, there's a solution for every single problem out there. And I, I attribute that thought um, to my mother, God bless her soul. She was almost 94 years old, double amputee in a wheelchair, lived in her own home until the very end um, when she went to the hospital and passed within a few weeks. Um, that woman did everything. Um, she cooked meals for the whole family, um, she did the, her wash until she couldn't get down the steps anymore, um, you know, and then um, I took that over and 
um, you know, but she basically took care of herself. And um, we always said, you know, there's a solution for every single problem. You just have to find it. And, you know, sometimes that can be pretty difficult. But, you know, I truly, I truly believe that. And I believe that we have good people working on it. And um, I, you know, we are taking steps to try to, you know, keep this under control. And I do follow the rules. I mean, if there's a rule that you wear a mask uh, going into a place, I wear a mask. Um, regardless of I might not agree just how effective that is. I've heard, I've heard it um, both ways, okay? So, you know, you can just about support any argument by whatever news channels you see, which I recommend, again, change up your news channels once in a while. You'll get a whole new perspective. You don't have to agree with it, but don't shut it off, you know, and not hear what others think. Um, so uh, I, I do respect others' opinions on this, and you have to do what you think um, is best based on what you learn and not just based on your um, feelings. Uh, so um, anyway, I guess that's about it for today. And that's probably about it for COVID conversations. Uh, you know, I don't expect to convince anybody to think the way I do. Um, but like I say, I'm, I'm basically an optimistic person. Um, and, you know, I believe in solutions. And, um, you know, it, it will eventually come to, the, come to an end one way or another, okay? So take care of yourselves out there. Um, do what you have to do. And um, I'll see you in my next walk and talk. I don't know what it will be on, but have a great day. Bye-bye.